Hi, it's Johnny Marks. Thank you so much for checking out the Marks in the Morning podcast. Remember, you can listen to myself, Carrie Mack, and JP weekdays from 6 to 10 live on K92.3. Shine. Get out of bed. It's time to get your day started. This is Marks in the Morning on K92.3. Can I get a countdown? Can I get a countdown? Three, two, one. Well, good morning. It's Tuesday, and it is, uh, as Rebecca's just said, it's going to be a nice day. Watch that snow melt. I'm Johnny Marks. This is Carrie Mack. How are you, Carrie? I'm doing great. I had a really good day yesterday. I got my headphones finally. There she is. Carrie Mack has graduated from headphone borrower to owner of a pair of headphones. I was going to bring it up more. It's been brought up on the air, but I was going to bring it up to the point of gentle shaming if you hadn't finally got these. <laughs> it was one of the first things, Carrie, when she got here, she told JP and I, and now we're going on a month and some, oh, we'll just say two months. Yeah. And you said, I've ordered a pair of headphones. I think they're just like yours. JP and I have the same ones. And uh, we said, cool, you'll love them. They're great. Uh, all the broadcasters we know use them uh, or have experienced them. They're called Sony Studio Monitors. They have like a code name. But that's what their uh, outward appearance says. And uh, a couple weeks go by. Carrie says, well, I shipped them to the wrong address, your home address. Honest mistake, it can happen. And you're not going to see your folks for a while. But then it turned out you didn't ship them anywhere. I didn't place the order. You know, <laughs> ha- But everyone has done this where they've placed their thing in the cart online, but they haven't gone forward and bought it. Because I'm just so used to automatically being able to buy stuff. Yeah. I just thought I hit a button, but I didn't hit a button. That's what you feel like every day, probably. You might miss a button sometimes. I've occasionally missed a button on the control board here, but I would get suspicious if my package hadn't arrived within, you know, two days. Yeah. And uh, so another week goes by and another week and another week, and you adventured over to Best Buy to try to buy them just in brick and mortar, couldn't do it. And these are hard to find headphones. Yeah. They are kind of an unusual headphone. Anyways, long story short, they're here, and they look splendid. They arrived yesterday. Carrie was posting photos of them on her social media. What's your Instagram again, Carrie Mack? Uh, Carrie Mack on the mic, K-E-R-R-I, Mac on the mic. And they are in your story still, so yeah. as, as I can see them, and I have a pair myself, you can see them too if you follow Carrie on Instagram. Check her out there. All right, uh, we got a lot of good stuff on the show today. We, of course, have a gender bender round here coming up. 735, we'll take our callers. It's sponsored by Mud and Honey. And our ladies are off to the races this week with a one nothing win over the guys. Good luck on uh, proving your gender dominance. So much more. It is a, uh, it's a Tuesday morning here in the Cedar Valley, and it's going to be a nice day. I think this might be, I, I didn't look back to verify this, but I'm pretty sure this is the first day in probably two weeks where we haven't had any delays. Even yesterday, though the weather was very nice, we, we had a few delays because of uh, the snow from Sunday. Not too bad. One thing last night, we were sitting watching TV. Like a couple old people, Hannah and I, were watching reruns of Jeopardy. That was what we were unwinding Aww. with on Netflix. And we were watching it, and uh, it sounded like somebody was tapping at the window. Kind of like uh, occasional sound. And we were, what is that? We were sitting by the window, so we knew nobody was there. Nobody was at the door. There were no headlights. And what it was, was chunks of ice were melting, even at night, even after the sun was almost all the way down. And it was dripping down. We have a kind of a bay window, so it was hitting the top of the bay window because uh, it pokes out of the house from the roof. So uh, I was, we were once we figured it out, we were thrilled because it's nice to watch the snow melt. We only do inches of snow when we're talking about after a snowfall. You know, oh, we got four. I think we got three and a half Sunday right here in Waterloo, and Points North got more. But we don't do now. We're down three and a half inches, right? But I would wager by the end of this week, unless we get more snow. Right now, it's not predicted. We'll be down as much or more than fell in the last couple of weeks, which is super nice. It's kind of fun. Now we'll probably get more in March at some point, but uh, it's kind of fun to watch it melt. But also a little creepy because it's been a full year since we've really heard that sound. So unless you were poking around our house, Carrie Mac, we got some melting snow, which is nice. Well, I hate to tell you, I was really lonely last night, and I just wanted to hang out with your wife. Oh, okay. I get that a lot. But you didn't open the door, so I guess you just used the... Freezing. Oh, that was dripping wine coming from. Yeah, that was, yeah. Okay. (laughs) Sounded like a Merlot, but I wasn't sure. (laughs) It was a Cabernet Sauvignon. Excuse me. Bless you. I don't know what that is. Uh, (laughs) Well, cool. All right. I tell you what, next time just come knock on the door, leave the wine at the door, and she'll be plenty happy. And then you can FaceTime each other. Oh, so you just want me to, like, not show up? Well, I need to enjoy my R&R time with her. 
You can have her on weekends. We'll have custom <laughs> battles. <laughs> What'd you do last night? Give me a highlight. Um, I went to the grocery store and I almost got ran over twice. Uh, in the parking lot or inside the store? No, when, when I was walking into the store, so I guess essentially in the parking lot. Was it? Is this the Cedar Falls High V? This is the Waterloo one. I came, the Waterloo. One. I was yeah. coming back from work. Okay, and it, it's cutthroat when you're going to a grocery store, man. Oh my gosh, people are so competitive there. I can't get over it. Also, people, I. Oh my gosh, I was just walking and someone was like backing up and I felt like one of those deer that accidentally runs in front of the car. So I did a, I literally jumped up and I was like, oh, oh my, like I did a little ope. You did an ope. Did you almost, what you were going towards the car as the car was coming towards you? So I was walking towards the store and the car was backing up. I got you. I got you. So I was just a hindrance to them on their journey. It is survival of the fittest in a grocery store parking lot at a certain hour. Like uh, you and I were talking a couple days ago, or maybe it was last Friday, we were talking about traffic in the Cedar Valley. Mm -hmm. And because of your hours, you don't leave, per se, at a common time. For example, it's the stereotype of quitting time, 5 o'clock. You hit 218 just outside of downtown Waterloo at about 515, give people a little time to get to their cars, start their cars in the winter, blah, blah, blah. And it gets pretty busy, but it's not like bumper to bumper. But I take it for granted because I get here... Forget 5.15 in the evening, it'd be like 4.15 in the morning. There's nobody on the road. A couple semis here and there and one or two folks maybe heading to Cedar Rapids or, or getting on 380, which is a ways down. But you get on the road later and it's crazy. Same thing if you go to a store, you know, when folks go straight from work, especially on a nice day, because, you know, either they're going to try to beat a storm or they just want to go out when it's nice. And you're going to experience the same thing. Now, I bet if you went there at like 2 o'clock, because I know when you left roughly yesterday. I bet if you went at 2 o'clock, you'd be very quiet. Yeah, I feel like it would definitely be so much quieter. And then, like a deer, you could just run towards the woods, which is Ivy. Yeah, I could have run towards the woods. But no, I almost had my antlers chopped off. <laughs> Here's a strategy for you. It's very quiet if you go to Fairway on a Sunday. Oh. Very quiet. Okay. They're not open. Oh, oh, I, I, I can't it. leave you hanging. I'll get an angry text message next week. I'll have no food for the whole week. <laughs> but it is quiet, though. It's like me going to the post office on Sunday or something. Like, why is nobody here? <laughs> I'm first in line. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> that would be me. Carrie Mac, you are, you are important. Hang on. I'm going to just, I want you to know how important you are for today's random facts. Because it has to do with music. And you are in the business of music. As are you. Yes, I am very important too. <laughs> I'm trying to focus on you. You giving soul, trying to give it right back to me. According to a new study, 80% of people under 30 say they cannot go driving without listening to music. 80% of people under 30, meaning that when they're going to work, dropping the kids off, out on the weekends, heading to a party. Remember those? Those were fun. They cannot go without music. Now, I find that interesting because a lot of people, I think, enjoy podcasting, which is uh, great. You know, we have our own. The show has a podcast, uh, and it's actually just the show without the music and the commercials. But I'm not, I, mean, I would have thought more people would have said, I can't be in the car without some sort of ambient noise, like a podcast. Music doesn't surprise me. My goodness, when I was a kid, that's all I wanted to listen to in the car. And then my dad would start singing. And if I had friends in the car, I'd try to do the old duck and roll where I'd flip out of the car like in a movie. <laughs> do you find that to be the case for you? Are you in that? You're under 30. Are you in that 80%? Or do you prefer spoken word or news talk or, sp well, not sports talk, I'm sure, but... Excuse me, maybe I do listen to sports talk. I was listening to some last night. And, and what did you learn? Uh, that Syracuse lost the game. Okay. Um, no, but I think the ambient noise with what you were saying is definitely accurate. I can't be in a car that's silent. I can't stand it. You My know. parents can do it. And I'm like, you're psychopaths. I can't either. I, if I'm driving, unless I have, like, I notice a noise in my car that I have to listen to. But even when I'm with a passenger, and lately it's only been my wife because we haven't really been doing much other stuff. We'll have something. I have to have something. on. Maybe it's because I'm in radio and I have to make sure our stations are on the air. But I still try to listen. Anyways, 80% uh, of us under 30 cannot drive without music. So what kind of music are people listening to? I would prefer, what do you think when they're heading to work? Upbeat, soft, what do you think? 
I'm not talking to genre here. I think I think soft because they like to ease into their day. Actually, it's the opposite. Sixty-five、uh, percent go for fast pace. Ninety percent like listening to upbeat music on their way to a party, and ninety-seven percent said they like shorter songs when they're going to be in the car for a long time. So, star, sorry, Stairway to Heaven. That one's、uh, probably not going to make the cut. But if you've noticed, this is something I've known. I've been in radio for a long time. Songs have gotten a lot shorter. Mm-hmm. Songs have gotten to the point where a lot of them are about two and a half minutes long, and they used to be a lot. I mean, well, classic rock songs are still those don't really get chopped, but they can go six, seven minutes, and that's not weird. But a new country song, a new pop song, I don't know other formats as well. They're very short. They're just so much shorter, you know. And I wonder if that's because our attention span is like,、eh, I'm over it. You hear the chorus a couple times, you're done. You don't need that long bridge with the snarling guitar or the drums. You're just ready to move on. I think so too, and I think that's also why people can't be in a car without listening to music because it kind of stimulates them. Yeah, it could be. It could be, and I think it's a combination of our attention spans, where we don't have enough for an entire podcast, and the fact that songs have gotten shorter. Anyways, we can go on and on about that, but、uh, instead, we'll continue to play music. Darius Rucker and Gabby Barrett on the way. We'll take a look at news and weather as well on Marks in the Morning and Carrie's Corner. Another new word coming up on the show. Hey y'all! Nice one so far. It's、uh, about thirty-one degrees, and we're going to learn a new word from Carrie here in just a moment. You know what national quote unquote fake holiday it is today, Carrie? Today is World Spay Day, which is very it rhymes. Spay Day. Spay is of course what you do to your pet to make sure they don't have animals, you know, kittens, puppies, whatever. Is spaying for a male or a female? Do you know? Oh, oh my gosh! There's neuter and there's spay. I know my uncle just got his dog fixed. So, do you remember what he had done to it? Um, he got something removed. Um, <laughs> or tied. Uh, neutered, I think, is for guys. Yeah. And spaying is for girls. Spay is for yeah. Spay is for the、uh, for the lady dogs or the kitty you know, girl cats, whatever. Yeah, spay. So happy spay day. Neuter day is where guys will go, ooh, and you know we'll we'll all kind of do that collective ooh thing. <laughs> Not today. All right, Carrie Mac, let's learn something this morning from you. Intelligence, aptitude. Um, where's my thesaurus? Ah, perseverance. This is Carrie's corner on Marks in the morning. Only a couple more Carrie's corners left. We've got to learn something here、uh, of value. Last couple words, Carrie, have gone in one ear and out the other. I'm not going to lie; I I can't retain them. My lexicon isn't very large. Ooh, I like、and、the use of the lexicon word. Thank you, thank you. What was it? Nugget fuzzle or one? There was. One? Oh my god! Like nuggetory. Nuggetory. JP and I still say that in the hallway sometimes to each other. So, <laughs> oh my god! I'm hoping for another one that incorporates food, but has nothing to do with food. What you got today? Um, this one's a toughie. I had to look up the pronunciation, and I was practicing it off air. Okay. Uh, cacoraphiophobia. Cacoraphio. Cacoraphiophobia. Cacoraphiophobia. Phobia. Phobia. I believe that's a fear of Raphael, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle,、uh, or the famous、uh, <laughs> artist. E- yes, exactly. No, no, it's no. Not. Cacoraphiophobia. All right, can you try to use it in a sentence? It is kind of a sentence all in of itself. Yes, it is. It's multiple syllables. Yeah.、Uh, this is the last word that someone with cra- cacoraphiophobia would want to encounter in a spelling bee. <laughs> fear of、uh, large words. It is a fear. It's a fear of failure. Okay. He had phobia in there, so it was obviously a fear of something. But fear of failure. Yes. All right, cacoraphiophobia. I think most of us have it, but we would never use that word to describe the fear because then people would have to have it explained, and that's the last thing somebody with a fear wants to do is have to explain something. Or you'd have to, or you'd fail to pronounce it, so、yeah. you fear the failure of you'd that. You'd fail to pronounce it, then fail to properly explain it, and、yes. then you'd be right back where you started. Exactly. Wow, I feel like I need to lay down after that one. Cacoraphiophobia. I feel like my mouth is running a marathon. Cacoraphiophobia. <laughs> Phobia. Is there a C or a K to kick it's it? It's a、up? K. It's a K. Yeah, K. There's two Ks. Wow. There's a lot going on in that word. Cacoraphiophobia. Try to use it today. You'll impress your friends. It's especially cool if you can use it to describe them. Now that you know what it means, <laughs> see if they catch on. All right, we'll be back in a couple minutes. Nashville news on the way. Chase Bryant is alive and well, but he almost 
died in 2018. He tried to take his life. We'll get into it next. He's talking about it and uh, trying to help people out that may be in a similar position to him. We have this on our K92.3 app. I'll give you the highlights. Coming up, in a relationship with Blake Shelton is funny. They're like brothers in, in a lot of ways. They fight like brothers. Uh, you can see why Blake's trolling Luke Bryan once again. Yes, it has to do with American Idol on the K92.3 app. Of course, Blake's on The Voice. Luke's on Idol. And even though Blake gave him, gave him advice to do the show, to do Idol, they are still on rival shows. So occasionally they will uh, jab at each other. Except it's it's not really jabbing at each other. It's always Blake jabbing at Luke. So uh, <laughs> it's the kind of relationship we should all aspire to have. That friend that you can always poke fun at and they never come back at you. But they silently laugh because they are doing just fine on their own. <laughs> it's 7.07. It's Mark's in the morning. We'll do Tuesday Blues Day here in a little bit. Oh, and I wanted to uh, do something, too, on the show. This, In fact, we'll be able to do it. We'll have time to do it before uh, Gender Bender, 7.35 for that. I don't want to say too much because I don't want you to think about it. I want to hit you with it at the same time our audience is hit with it. It's one of those hypothetical questions. Zero chance this could ever happen. But I think this is kind of fun for all ages. I'd say kids in middle school will have a better understanding and be able to answer this. But it's really fun for adults. Okay. A hypothetical question about American history. I'm going to give you no more than that. We'll get to it in uh, in a little bit. But Tuesday Blues Day is next. What is Tuesday Blues Day? So Tuesday Blues Day is, it doesn't have to happen right now, but something happened to you between last Tuesday and today. That you want to vent about. I don't want to say it's just for venting. It's really a first world problem sort of thing. Maybe a coworker ate your banana. I mean, how much do bananas cost? Not very much. I don't like bananas. Eat mine. I don't even have a banana. Maybe you were walking down. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Where Jerry, are you going with this? I feel like we should have a banana peel on the ground right now and have to slip. No, see that well that would be a Tuesday blues day. The coworker ate your banana and put the peel on the ground, whoop, down you went. And they're littering. Yes. You get the idea. If you got something to vent about, you can tap the message button on our K923 app to send it to us in the form of like a text. Or you can record by ta uh, tapping that beyond the radio button. We got a whole bunch here over the last week or so. They seem to come in hot and heavy over the weekends. So those 923, the Cedar Valley's number one for new country. Happy Tuesday, Blues Day. It marks in the morning, Tuesday, Blues Day. What's got you feeling blue today, Cedar Valley? Right. Yeah. Well, that makes me look stupid. That it does. That's what Tuesday, Blues Day is all about. Go ahead and vent about something. First world problem. Nobody here will judge you. Carrie Mack and I will certainly not because we have our Tuesday Blues Days as well. Carrie, what's on your mind? So I mentioned earlier that I went to the grocery store yesterday. Yeah. And nothing bugs me more than when there's a certain direction you're supposed to go in at the grocery store, especially with this pandemic. Yeah. And people go the opposite direction. Mm. Now, are you talking about, do they still have the arrows on the floor? Is that what you're talking about? Well, I think it's general courtesy that you oh. all go in one direction. You follow <laughs> the flow of the store. Even pr before COVID, you would just follow the flow of the store. You wouldn't go back. You wouldn't go this way. You wouldn't skip a line. I just think it's common courtesy. I will. Th before you got here, and I don't know when they disappeared, at least High V and maybe some other stores, too, had arrows on the ground, like you, like a one-way street, and nobody followed them. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't either. And so they just got rid of them. So that might be a, this might be an ongoing Tuesday Blues Day for you. It might be, but honestly, why can't we all just follow directions? Do we really need big red arrows on the ground for us to know which way we can go and which way we can? How did it, how does the flow go? Like, let's say it's aisle four, for yeah, example. Aisle four. How do you know if aisle four is uh, where you walk up from, you know, the cashier side or from that middle aisle side? How do you know? Why would you walk up from the cashier side? What if that's the way that people are turning? You know, they, like a left turn to get into aisle four as opposed to what? Going down the no, center part? No, this is why This is why the world is the way it is, Johnny, because <laughs> of you, honestly. I think I'm the subject of your Tuesday Blues Day. This is how I maneuver a grocery store. You are. It's just so frustrating. You can't come from the cashier because then you would have paid, but you didn't pay because you're still in the grocery store. Yeah, but sometimes you walk by the cashier. It's like the front line. Yeah, but you're supposed to follow the flow of traffic. You don't go the opposite direction when you're driving. I can't wait till the day we do. We have like an event together and you just see me wandering off and get super mad. 
I get so mad when I see this. Are you, are you really picky about, like, like for example, if you're with somebody, when you're by yourself, it's one thing. You do what you need to do. But if you're with somebody and they're not following that feng shui of the store or the chi or whatever, you uh, do you harp on them or do you just quietly judge them like the passive aggressive Midwesterner? No, I get really mad and I tell them you can't do that. <laughs> you don't know how to walk through a store. That's the East Coaster in me. Like, come on, step it up. You have to follow directions. <laughs> I've never known anybody to get mad about that. I, I will, do. I will not so go mad. grocery sh- uh, shopping with you because you get so irritated. No. It's all right, carry back. This is a safe space. However, it won't be if we go grocery shopping together. I will have a sore shoulder because you'll be punching me. All right. <laughs> my Tuesday Blues Day, I just wish when we get snow like we did Sunday, people move their car off the streets. Snow is predicted. You know it's coming. And when you don't move your car, especially when you park in front of somebody's house and it's not your house, the plow goes around you. And then that person is stuck with having a poor plow job because the plow had to go around the car. So you have this little embankment. Then when you do finally move your car, it's even a bigger mess because you obviously had to push some snow out of the way. And so there's snow all over the road. And when I have to come, you know, down that road to get out of my driveway slash get to work, it's not good. My car's front-wheel drive, which, yes, that was my fault. I thought I was buying a four-wheel drive car. That's another story for another day. Anyways, when you know it's going to snow, please don't park in front of somebody else's house. If you don't have your own driveway, I don't know, find one. Ask somebody for their driveway space so the plows can come by. That's right. All right, let's get to it. We got a a bunch of people who've left us messages on our K92.3 app. No spoilers, but this one's about spoilers. Here's something that fucks me. I hate the idea of spoilers. Before, nobody was really concerned with, oh, you told me the end of the movie. If you're going to watch the movie, you're going to watch the movie. If it's an action movie, we know the good guy's going to win. If it's a rom-com, we know they're going to fall in love and get together. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand this idea or this perception of like, ooh, don't, don't tell me the end of the movie. You already know the end of the movie. Done. I, I kind of love her for that. Yeah. Oh, wow. She gets a, a big uh, harmonica solo. Oh, my. She, you're so wrong. You're so wrong. Whoa, she's wrong. She's right through you. Already, look, you already know. Darth, well, okay, you didn't know Darth Vader was Luke's dad, but you already know Luke's going to win, right? That's a, an ancient history story. But part of the journey of a movie isn't the actual end. It's like all of those little plot points that happen leading up to it. Like, how do you get to the end? Does Ashton Kutcher run off with Mila Kunis uh, <laughs> on a plane or on a boat? Like, that's oh, part of the journey. Spoiler, they go home together because they're married. Yeah, they are. But Here's, the, here's the, what we need to do now. Carrie Mac, you and I will go grocery shopping, and immediately after, you'll get in your car and go to a movie with this woman. <laughs> and it'll be a movie she's already seen. She did not leave her name on the K92.3 app. When you go to record a message, it doesn't tell us your name, just FYI. So if you want us to mention it, you're going to have to put it in your recording. Here is uh, somebody who's not a fan of going out to eat with picky eaters. I absolutely hate dining with picky eaters. Like, I just cannot relate to it. I'm okay with you just saying, I I want a plain chicken sandwich or I only (laughs) like lettuce. But people who have to take out every little part of their order and customize everything just stay at home Mm. why are you making this so complicated for the rest of us yeah there's waitresses waiters chefs cooks line kitchen everybody going yes preach it but at the same time why does it matter if you're eating with that person i'd say it would matter more if you're preparing their order Mm -hmm. I, i don't know I can imagine the secondhand embarrassment because I know a few people who are like that. But also I have to think about people who have allergies or who don't eat meat or are vegan. Yeah, I get that. But at the same time, why are they even at whatever restaurant? I don't know. It probably depends. (laughs) Why are they at the steakhouse if they're a vegetarian? (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to Texas Roadhouse. What can I get you? Do you have any green beans? Yeah, that'll do. Can you substitute? No, those have bacon on them, actually. <laughs> I take that back. All right. It's, you know, we have a whole bunch more, but we're running behind. So we'll have to save those for another day. I apologize. You can make your Tuesday Blues Day that we didn't do yours on the radio. But we will next time. Uh-huh. I promise. Uh, record a message for us. Download the K92.3 app and tap B on the radio. That's all you got to do. You will have to include your name if you want us to mention it because it doesn't tell us like it does when you send us a message. All right, here's a fun activity, something you can do with your kids or you can do with your coworkers or you can just do yourself a hypothetical on American history. 
What is it? I'll tell you. Coming up now, Carrie Mack probably wants to tear my arms off after my remark about um, uh, grocery store shopping. Hannah and I go grocery store shopping almost weekly. There are weeks where it just doesn't work out and she'll go without me. She will tell you. In fact, I'm waiting for a message from her. She might be driving to work. But uh, she drive, I drive her nuts because we'll go in together and about three feet into the store, I'm gone. I'm somewhere else. And then she can't find me. I can't find her. She's like, okay, why don't you go find something for your lunches this week? And then we'll do, you know, cooking ahead of time. Okay. And I'll come back 20 minutes later with like a six pack of beer. And she'll be like, where's the food? I'm, like, I'm going to have this. No, what do you want for your lunches? Oh, yeah. And then I'll venture off, come back with, you know, like a, a case of beer. And that's pretty much Oh, my goodness. Sometimes I think of her. I'll bring back stuff I think she likes. I'm like a crow. If you befriend a crow, it'll bring you shiny things. Well, that's what I do. I, <laughs> I just... also carry diseases. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Hannah needs to get a leash for you when you go to the grocery store, from what I'm hearing. Oh, she does. For sure. <laughs> or a tracking device. Yeah. GPS. Maybe that's why the last couple of weeks she's just kind of gone her own, on her own. Uh, I want to give a shout out. I hope I'm pronouncing her last name right. She's been on the show with us. Stephanie, is, it's either Berg or Bergie. She just um, won a big, big uh, Class 2A championship for bowling. She goes to Waterloo East. Big accomplishment. This is huge. Stephanie was here in our studio. Oh, gosh. I want to say this time last year. It was obviously pre-COVID. And she was there with the whole team. But this is an individual award, so congrats to her. She's great. I remember her from last year. Uh, and I remember and we were joking. I don't know if it was on the air or off the air about bowling. I once, but this is not a joke. Nobody's going to believe me because I lost the slip. But I once bowled at 206, and she laughed and thought that was low. So <laughs> <laughs> if a 206 is low, I'm SOL. Uh, but uh, oh. congrats to her. That's really awesome. She did this at the Cadillac XBC. Uh, yesterday or the day before. I'm not exactly sure when, but very uh, happy for her. And uh, I'm sure if you're good at any ac activity or sport, you make one tiny mistake and you beat yourself up over it. I hope she doesn't because I was reading a write-up and she kind of did. But she bowled, uh, rolled a uh, 393 series to finish seventh last year. So the jump to number one is uh, is incredible. Congrats to her. We'll have more on, on her later on. Okay. Carrie Mack, this is a hypothetical, and I want you, if you're listening right now and you've got a, a son or a daughter who gets the basic gist of American history, maybe they've learned up through Lincoln or the Civil War, they can participate. But this is fun for all ages. If you could go back in U.S. history, we're only going to talk about U.S. history, not going to get into international stuff, and change one historic event without any ramifications. We've all seen Back to the Future. Marty screws everything up, takes three movies to fix it. This is not that. This is hypothetical. You can change one element of American history. What do you change? You can't go to you know China and prevent COVID. That doesn't count because it didn't start in the U.S. So you can't go just, I'm going to 2019 to that market. And no, it has to be in the U.S., U.S. history. Can't be anything overseas, even if it involved America. Got to stay here in the 48. Or I guess Alaska or Hawaii. So U.S. What do you got? You got one, or do you? Oh want to go my first? goodness! I didn't tell. I didn't say. Usually, Carrie and I set everything up in advance, so we're on the same page. But I didn't want her to have too much like, mm, and then double double uh, kind of guess herself out of her answer. Um, I think what I would do is go back in time, and because I'm a huge history buff, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, prevent Abraham Lincoln's second VP from being his VP. Oh, I thought you were going to say assassination. No, Andrew no. Johnson. Yeah, Andrew Johnson, because he screwed everything up with a uh, reconstruction. Okay. And he was a straight up alcoholic, too, from what I read. Yeah, you actually turned me on to a podcast, which I meant to thank you, that uh, it was like 25 minutes. It's a woman telling history of just one president, which is right up my alley. And I did listen to that. And I didn't know that. He went before Congress or something or the Senate completely hammered. Yes. Uh, this is before social media. But at the time, obviously, that would hurt the trust of your allies and opponents. It is Black History Month. Dr. King Jr.'s assassination would be a good one to prevent. I think 68, he was killed. Oh, that's... That's a big one. That's a really good one. I was trying to think back and see what... Wait, do we still... You said no repercussions, but if I change one thing... Well, I mean, repercussions as in, oh, no, my parents might not meet and I might not be born. Obviously, you'd be changing the course of history. Yes, okay. I get that. That's why it's hypothetical. I just mean, don't overthink it. Okay, okay, yeah. So you're going I, with Johnson. I'm still sticking with that because if we had a good VP during that time, I feel mm. like things would have been so much better after Reconstruction um, and things would even be so much better now. You're probably the f only person in history to play this game that, that has an answer centered around a vice president. But I give you credit. <laughs> 
Lincoln assassination. For me, this is a tough one. And I have had the hindsight, you know, 2020, because I've been able to think about this for a while. But I would probably, I've been debating the Lincoln, preventing the Lincoln assassination or preventing the Kennedy assassination. There's been countless presidential assassinations or even attempts. Uh, McKinley was assassinated, et cetera. But I think those two are the biggest. Yeah, they are. Did you listen to the JFK episode of that podcast? No, it's I really to. good. It's really I did good. LBJ, though, that was fascinating. Ooh, his, yes. his vice president. But JFK got up to some stuff. Yeah. So that's he's, he's interesting. An, odd, an interesting guy. All right, let's go with Lincoln. I would, we're going to keep ours centered around the exact same time period. <laughs> if I do mine, though, you don't have to worry about Johnson unless Lincoln trips and falls somewhere else and dies. But I would say. I'd sneak up from behind and hit John Wilkes Booth in the back of the head with a brick or something, knock him right out, and, uh, you know, quietly leave. And Lincoln would probably go, what was that? <laughs> and then we'd move on. That's my answer. I feel like you should just take away Lincoln's ticket from that theater <laughs> show, make Where him not go. I leave my ticket? Lincoln had such a tragic life after he was dead. His wife was committed. She was in an insane asylum. Uh, it would have been interesting if he had lived. Would that have happened? She had her issues even when he was alive. But all right, we can go on forever. Let's move on. It's Marks in the Morning. It's a fun little hypothetical. Gender Bender is about six, we'll say seven minutes away, your chance to win a mud and honey gift card. Hang on. That's coming up on K92.3, the Cedar Valley's number one for new country. Are you ready? It's time to play Gender Bender on Marks in the Morning. Hey, Johnny Marks, who are our contestants today? This morning, uh, battling it out for not only that mud and honey gift card, but bragging rights are Casey and Michael. I'll start with Casey. She's on line one from Cedar Falls. Casey, you're going to UNI right now. Is that right? You're on your way to school? Yes, I am. So you don't live on campus then, I assume, if you're driving in? or do Well, you? I live on the outside of campus. <laughs> okay. What year are you at UNI? Senior. Oh, she's ready to go. Do you, how long do you think you'll stick around in the Cedar Valley, or are you looking to go elsewhere when you graduate? I'm going back home. Oh, man. Where's it's home? Southern Iowa. Southern Iowa. Okay. Well, at least you're staying in the flock of Iowans, if you would. Your opponent is Michael calling in from Reedland, JP's neck of the woods. JP will be in a little later. Michael, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Glad to hear that. And you just got off work. Is that right? Must be third yep. shift? Okay. Well, let's see if, you're, uh, if your brain is stimulated and ready. You've had the advantage of being up for a while, but we'll see who wins at the end here. One of you will. The other will be able to call back tomorrow. And you're playing for a Mud and Honey gift card. Of course, uh, if we have a tie after our questions are done, we'll go to a percentage-based tiebreaker. Casey, you got through right away this morning, so you decide. Are you up first or Michael? Who's going? Michael can go first. Okay, Kerry Mack will ask him his questions in a moment. Then I will ask you yours, Casey. Good luck. All right. Okay, Michael. Um, so the Golden Globes are this Sunday, uh, but we're going to think ahead a bit to the Oscars. Uh, true or false, no woman had ever won an Oscar for Best Director until 2008. True or false? Uh, let's go true. Yes. Was that the Hurt Locker? Yeah, it was the Hurt Locker by Catherine Bigelow. Okay. Was she the one? She wasn't the one that used to be married to, uh, what's his name? James Cameron. No, that's the lady from Terminator. Yeah, Terminator. that's the lady from okay. Terminator. Okay, Michael, what do you call it when you move one house plant from one pot to another pot? Um, I have no idea. That's okay. It's called transplanting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think of a transplant is something doctors do in the last hour of life to save you when you get a baboon heart. <laughs> Not a plant going from one pot to another. From one ficus to another. <laughs> All right. All right. This is for a score of two out of three if you get it right, Michael. Okay. What do you call a mixture of sugar and cream? I have no idea. That's okay. It's buttercream. I call it delicious. Oh, I knew that one. <laughs> that, that was a hard one. Once actually, you said it, I knew it. Uh, I thought that was a hard one. I would not have known that. All right, Michael. That's all right. Let's see how you do against Casey's score. You got one out of three. Casey, we are going to start with question number one. Are you old enough to drink, Casey? Yes, I am. Okay. I was seriously going to switch this question out, but because you said you are old enough, what is the name of the drink you get when you mix vodka, Kahlua, and milk or cream? Your options are Fuzzy Navel, White Russian, or Irish Carbon. Is it White Russian? It is a white Russian. That is correct. And uh, maybe the cream was the ingredient that gave it away. Question number two. What do you call the long leather leggings cowboys wear? Chaps. 
Yep. That is right. Chaps. And uh, I'm, I'm a fan of a certain type of chap with nothing going on in the back. If you know what I mean there, Karen. <laughs> show them you sometime. All right. Oh, and geez. question number three for a perfect score. The thickness of beer is often described as the what part of beer? You get the alcohol questions. The thickness of beer is described Ooh, as the what? I'm not a beer drinker, so I can't answer this one. <laughs> That's all right. You don't need it for the win. It's called the body. The thickness of a beer would be called the body of a beer. And uh, that's what Sam Hunt's referring to when he says body like a back road. That's more of a porter, right? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> so that's not, that's, that was not true. But uh, the body part was. Congratulations, Casey. It's two out of three. The final score today, two to one. Michael, you're welcome to call us back tomorrow and try again, okay? We'd love to have you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Casey, what's your major? What are you going to be uh, going for here? I'm elementary middle level major. Oh, that is awesome. They, Carrie's just, her eyes lit up. She's got baby fever. No, I don't. Oh. I just love teachers. I think they're amazing. So that's good for you. Teachers are oh, amazing. Well, thank you so much. And the beauty of it is, Casey, you'll have your summers off very soon. Very soon. You'll have a whole yes. summer off. <laughs> hey, hang on the line. We'll get your information. You are our winner today. And if you think, oh, I could have gotten all three of those, well, give us a call tomorrow and prove it. There's some great songs on K923 right now that I just. I hope they're still extremely popular in the summertime. That one from Darius Rucker, Beers and Sunshine, which will sound so good in even May, June for sure. Uh, good Time from Nico Moon, which is flying up the charts. Uh, of those two songs, I mean, like, if you're doing a summer playlist with recent current country hits, those two have to be on there. And uh, I can't wait till we can sit outside with the Beers and Sunshine. Then we go sit by the water. we got a lot of water in and around the Cedar Valley. And uh, have some good times. Bonfires in the spring before it gets too hot. The bugs come back. Lots to look forward to. All right. Uh, Carrie Mack, we're not there yet. And you had a uh, fashion faux pas, according to a certain somebody. Your neighbor. Let's rewind before we get to this. Carrie Mack has been living in a um, an area hotel. You've kind of been doing the long-term residence thing. And some guy moved in around the time of the Super Bowl or shortly shortly before, probably at the start of February. And you guys had a bad start. You called him out for being loud on the radio. And the next day, he called in and complained about it because I guess you gave him cookies, right? Remind me, you've tried bringing him cookies that he didn't eat. So one of our listeners suggested I kill him with kindness, not actually kill him. Yeah. But I went and made him cookies. And by make, I mean I shoved a bunch of Toll House cookies into my <laughs> air fryer. It was great. They were delicious. I offered some to him. Uh, we got a little lost in translation because he's apparently gluten-free or vegan or whatever. Uh, I got insulted, but we were all okay. Up until this point, we we were saying hi to each other in the hall, but then the other day he just like randomly came up to me yeah. and saw that I, w- I just came in from work and okay. I am a very cold person. So I like to keep my mittens on uh, up until I get to my room because I have such cold hands, such cold feet. And he saw the mittens and he started making fun of me for them. <laughs> don't laugh. Don't laugh. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay. I am clearly laughing. I can't say I'm not. Your neighbor who has... He, what, I, what I laughed to is he was the uh, gluten or whatever, right? Was, yes. We asked him on the radio if he had celiacs and he didn't know what that was, which is fine. Oh, a lot of people don't eat gluten. I don't eat carbs. Do they hurt me? No. I just They just make me feel bloated and overweight. So I can't complain or make fun of him. But this is the guy who um, I don't know what his sense of fashion is. That's a whole other direction, which is obviously where we're heading. But he is a uh, fairly uncouth individual. He's loud. Mm-hmm. He's sort of unassuming otherwise, meaning he's not going to go out, his way, out of his way to be friendly, which is fine. I'm very unassuming. Uh, I always say hi to the neighbors, but I won't be the one to go like over and, hey, hi, how are you? How are the kids? This guy sounds like he's downright standoffish. Um, but for him to, he, did he initiate, like you said, you guys have been uh, chit-chatting. Hi, hi, how are you in the hallway? Did you like say, hey, it's cold or like what you just... All of a sudden, rips on your mittens. Well, I, I, he was, he looked down at my hands because we stopped to talk to each other for a second, <laughs> because I was curious uh, if he, like, what he was up to that day. Yeah. And he just like looked down at them, and then st- like I felt like he was looking down on me. And he said, "Why are you wearing mittens?" Quote. Those are for five-year-olds. <laughs> he said those are for five-year-olds? Yeah, those are for five-year-olds. And I was like, um, it's cold though. And then I just waddled away. I was so embarrassed. Carrie sent me an email 
I should have known this was coming. I mean, you told you told me a little bit about this story, but you sent me an email about how mittens are far better for keeping you warm than gloves. And I said, well, who the heck sits there and does science on mittens versus gloves? Uh, look, I go snow blowing uh, every couple of weeks. I feel like I've had to get the snow blower out. We got it out on Sunday. I wore some really flimsy gloves. But I don't think mittens would have helped just because it would have been hard to grip the snow blower. No. That's all I'm going to say about it. No. Uh, can you drive with them? You you can drive with them. The thing about mittens is that because your four fingers are so close together, that's supposed to keep your hands warmer. Okay. Well, I, I don't doubt the science that mittens keep your hands warm. I read your article. But I'm saying is they do seem like something children would wear as opposed to people over, you know, 12 or 13. Excuse me. I... Why would they make mittens that are for people who have large hands if they're not just for children, if they're not for everyone? Didn't Bernie Sanders in that meme have mittens on? Yes, he did. And he's <laughs> one of the most well-known politicians in America. He's, he's one of the most well-known mitten wearers in America. <laughs> yes. What he has done for the mitten community is outstanding. Oh, no. He's emboldened your mitten wearing, hasn't he? Yes. he. Ha I honestly started wearing my mittens more, like hashtag no shame because of Bernie. Oh. Look, uh, mittens are not my thing. I Like I was saying earlier, my gloves, I know they didn't do very good for me. I had those cheap, flimsy, like $3 a pair of Target gloves on. But I could I could push the uh, snowblower in them. I could maneuver around. I think with mittens, I'd lose my grip. I, what I'm saying is mittens may be great for, like, let's stand around. But as soon as you've got to grip something like a cup of coffee, a snowblower, a shovel, they're not very practical. That's why I think children often have them. Well, children have or, them. Or people going to an inauguration. <laughs> <laughs> children have them because parents have the good sense to keep their hands warm. And you know who's doing a bunch of random stuff with, like, different things? Children. They're the ones who are touching everything. They're the ones who are throwing everything. They're, like, gripping the monkey bars, and they're not falling off. I think that children are our future, and also our, the future for mitten wearing is so strong. I'm very passionate about this. I can tell. My goodness, you get in, you get really into... Here, uh, <laughs> Max wrote in on the K92.3 app. Download our app and uh, tap the chat button if you are looking to connect to us, uh, connect with us. He wrote in, look, you don't go to Menards and see heavy-duty mittens for outdoor work, do you? No, but you do see outdoor heavy-duty work gloves. I'm That's not, all he says. <laughs> I'm not saying that gloves and mittens, like one is better than the other. What I'm saying is gloves should be used for certain work, but they're not used to keep you warm. Mittens yeah. are so much better, and they keep you so much warmer. Let me take this call. Hi, good morning. Who's this? Good morning, Stan. Stan. Okay, we love when Stan calls in. All right, Stan, your your thoughts on mittens slash gloves? Well, if you watch the women, probably 50% of women wear mittens. I wear gloves all the time doing chores and working out in the farm. But if I go to a farm sale, I got a nice pair of mittens I wear. Oh, okay, so you've got gloves for work, mittens for just trying to stay warm. Yep. All right. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, no, I Mittens ain't just for kids. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. I agree with you completely. Well, okay. thank you, Stan. We appreciate it. You have a good day. And they've, been, they've been making mittens a lot longer than they have gloves. Well, that's, yeah. It's less fabric. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Stan. Have a good day. Yep. Bye-bye. Right. We love when Stan calls in. And Stan, I've noticed more often than not, it takes your side, Carrie Mack. Yeah, he does because Stan is my favorite. Stan is my number one he's, fan. He's a Stan for you. Yes, he is. Also, we posted this on Facebook, uh, if, whether or not you're yay yeah. or nay for mittens. Yeah, please do, do chime in. If you're listening now and you're driving and this isn't the time to message in, we totally get it. Uh, let me read this message. we got about 10 app messages. You've wow. Tapped, we've tapped a nerve here. Uh, but, uh, let's start with Iowa Girl 81. Children have mittens because parents don't want to try to get all five fingers in each individual hole. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably, I, I don't have kids. I hope to one day, but you're absolutely right. However, mittens are warmer because they keep your four fingers together. Oh, that just as Carrie said. Mm -hmm. D wrote in, D-E-E, -E, wrote in and said, I don't think I've worn a pair of mittens since I was too young to... Uh, too young to say no. I think he means when well, I was too young to say no. No way I'd wear them as a full-grown man. <laughs> also, we shouldn't Thanks, shame G. men for wearing mittens. No, I'm, I don't think wear, that's where we're going. That's wear what mittens. Said. Wear mittens. They're so much fun, and they're also so warm. Mark says, you should put this to the test. Have a snowball fight. One of you in mittens, one of you in gloves. See who has the, see who has better luck. 
Mark, uh, appreciate it. Thank you so much. I This is great snowball weather. It's not too cold out. And the snow, the last snow we got is kind of that heavy snow, so it wouldn't be too hard to do. Uh, somebody says, uh, Glenn says, I was born in Alaska, and I can say mittens are used everywhere in Alaska. Shoveling, skiing, snowmobiling, walking your dog, etc. Yeah, sure. Y- y- yeah, sure. I think it's a typo. <laughs> Y-E-H. Well, yeah, sure. Gloves are great when you're trying to do something like pulling the starter from a plow. Oh, uh, but but for effectiveness, light wear, blah, blah, blah. Yes, he's a mittens person. So okay. thanks, Glenn. Pro mittens over here. Uh, is yeah, an Alaska thing, Y-E-H. Or maybe he just typed it. I don't know, Alaska. All right. So you're getting a lot. There's a ton more. I won't read them all. But like Carrie said, uh, and most of them seem to be supportive of you, Carrie. Maybe it's because your mean neighbor, your mean neighbor should have been more cool. Look, I wouldn't have said anything. But as coworkers, I might have said something. I have seen your mittens before. I haven't said anything. But since it's been brought up. <laughs> Johnny, do what? you hate my mittens? No, I think your mittens are very pleasant. I mean, you pleasant. know, they're fine. You should give them to your, you know, do you have an eight-year-old niece or nephew? Excuse me. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm insulted. I'm going to buy you a pair of mittens and you're going to have to wear them all day. I, my glass pair of gloves have a huge hole in them. So the mittens probably wouldn't, I wouldn't turn them down. I just wouldn't wear them when anybody's around. It's Marks in the Morning. Facebook Doc. It's K92.3, the Cedar Valley's number one for new country. We'll move on from the mittens thing, although it's on Facebook, but I will read this. Uh, but Samantha wrote in and says, I love my wool mittens made in Decorah. That's awesome. Um, you should tell us, Samantha, where you got them. Like you said, they're made in Decorah. Where in Decorah? Uh, mittens are, mittens are, if you are good at making stuff like, uh, sewing and whatnot, I, I bet mittens wouldn't be too hard. Cause like with gloves, you have to do sizes and stuff. Mittens are like one size fits all. There's children's, then there's adults. <laughs> but Carrie Max is going to stick to her guns on the mittens. Hey, uh, Rodney Atkins, uh, oh, I, and Samantha, no, and let me get this right. Amanda wrote in on the K92.3 app. I don't want to miss this. She says, Hey guys, I'm listening to you at home. I took today off to paint my bedroom. Got you on, on my, I'll just say A-L-E-X-A device. Last time I said her name, we were playing when I got back into my office. <laughs> I was very confused. Uh, thank you so much. If you have a smart speaker, enable the K-Country skill like Amanda did. Hannah and I are painting our bedroom as well. Not right at this very moment, but uh, it's about half painted. Because, <laughs> you know, time is hard. And uh, I give Amanda credit for taking the day off. So, Amanda, here's my tip to you. This is what my wife told me after she started painting the bedroom. Don't sniff too much. Don't inhale too much or you're going to pass out. <laughs> Good thing you probably got a bed if it's the bedroom, right? Oh, my gosh. She just passes out right there. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't do that. All right. Anyways, uh, Rodney Atkins just had his song. In that song, watching you, he references McNuggets, which is uh, one of the most precious lines in the history of country music. And it got me thinking about old items at McDonald's, classic items that are no longer available. And these are right off the top of my head, but I want to see if you know any of these, Carrie. Okay. You are currently living in an era where the McDonald's menu is very trim. All fast food restaurants, pretty trim, right? Like, there's not a lot of extra baggage. Back when I was a kid, they had something called the snack wrap. Do you remember the snack wrap? I loved the snack wrap. I would get those all the time. I used to get them, not in college. I think I was out of college. I don't think I was a kid, but I think it was uh, early in my radio career. I used to get them all the time, too. I used to go through after work and get one. Do you remember the snack wrap? That's a more recent one. Yeah, I remember it. Okay. It had like chicken, lettuce, stuff like that. Do you remember Chicken Selects? Chicken Selects. I'm they weren't big nuggets, but they were, of course, chicken that was breaded. It, were they like chicken tenders? Yeah, they were a lot like chicken tenders. Okay. McDonald's actually scrapped those because they had a tough time keeping them hot, like you couldn't keep them hot. You'd, you'd made them, make them fresh, which is great. But if somebody was going through the drive-thru, they'd often be cold by the time you got home. And they right. were more expensive. So they had a tough time with that. Do you remember the Arch Deluxe? The Arch Deluxe? No, I do not know the Arch Deluxe. This puppy came out in 96 and was scrapped in about 2000. The, the idea behind the Arch Deluxe was that it was aimed at grown-ups. Now, if you go way back, you can find a young Jessica Beale in one of the commercials for the Arch Deluxe. She's Justin Timberlake's wife and uh, actress. She was on Seventh Heaven, I believe. Uh, she has no lines, but there's a commercial with an Arch Deluxe that she's in. Oh, okay. You know she's eating Arch Deluxes and <laughs> she looks like that. <laughs> right. Let's be honest. Like what? That's not what she's eating. She's eating half a snack wrap and calling it yeah, a day. She's the snack wrap and the small fry. The Arch Deluxe, though, they did all this R&D research uh, and 
McDonald's did, and what came out of it was the Arch Deluxe was kind of a flop. It's a well known flop, but they spent like three, two hundred, three hundred million dollars. Salads were the actual best thing that came out of that because they were just trying to do an adult menu. Salads, still around, obviously, at every restaurant now, uh, was the most successful thing. All right, I'll do two more here, and then we're going to move on. The McDLT, Mick, MC, DLT. Um, I think I listened to him on my iPod back in the day. <laughs> McDLT! Yeah, he was a really bad MC. MC DLT. No. Um, McDLT is a burger. Is it something lettuce tomato? Is it. Well, that's a good question. I honestly don't know. I Yeah, it's got to be. Because the McDLT has lettuce, tomato, pickle, cheese, if you wanted it, mayo, I think. The idea was, this is what made the McDLT so different, was you'd get the burger and the bun, the, the head, the crown, whatever it's called, on one side of the package. On the other side would be the the bottom bun with the lettuce, tomato, all the cold ingredients. So in other words, your hot ingredients were on one side, the cold ingredients were the other. You would put it together when you either got home or got to your table, and nothing would be soggy or the burger wouldn't be cold from the lettuce. You're, you're shaking your head. No, because the reason I go to a fast food place is so I can get my fat my food fast and not so I can spend time constructing the perfect sandwich. That's ridiculous. That was a huge sandwich. It was uh, around from 84 to 1998 and was only scrapped because the container was made of styrofoam and people were complaining about the environmental hazards. It'd probably still be around otherwise. One of my personal favorites was the Big and Tasty McDonald's answer to the Whopper. Do you remember the Big and Tasty? No, I don't. Isn't that just a Big Mac? Kobe Bryant used to do the ads. No, it was different than the Big Mac because it only had the two buns, only had one patty. It was like the quarter pounder patty. It was very similar to a Whopper. It had the mayo or whatever sauce, lettuce, tomato. I think it had ketchup, whatever. But it was very similar to a Whopper. That's, I used to love that one. You could get it with bacon. That's just a Big Mac without the bun in between. Essentially. Do you remember McDonald Land cookies? Little, uh, they were like animal crackers. Oh but no, they were I don't. Like Grimace and Ronald and all those folks. You don't remember those? No, I don't. Those I think made it to the nineties. Yeah, that was before my time. That was BK before Carrie or Burger King. <laughs> yeah, that, well, I think Burger King was around. Do you remember the super size option? You used to be able to go into McDonald's and get it super sized. What's the difference between super sizing and just getting a large meal? I so I actually worked at McDonald's in two thousand early two thousands when they scrapped the super size option, and I can tell you that your regular combo is like the medium fry and the super size was the large fry, and I think the same goes for the drink. But they called it super size. Now they just call it large, and I don't even think they have the large size option. Maybe oh, they do. it was a forty two ounce pop soda pop, as opposed to whatever I don't know. And then the fries were seven ounces. Wow. Up from five ounces. That's a baby. That's the size of a baby. <laughs> it's a big baby. <laughs> That's a big baby. Uh, yeah. Okay. I could go on forever. Uh, yeah, you I'll give could. You one, I said two more, like 10 more ago or 10 ago. Do you remember the salad shakers? Salad shakers? No. Used to be you'd get your salad at McDonald's, you'd put the dressing on, and you'd shake it like uh, like you were making a, a fit protein shake or something, and all the ingredients were in there. You, and it would shake up all the ingredients. You do that anyway with salad, especially when you order out. When I get Panera, I always put the, the dressing in there, and then I shake it up a bit so it spreads throughout. Yeah. I, I, these were smart because they'd fit in cup holders. They looked like it, was, oh. it, it, was, it looked like it was essentially in a McFlurry cup. Oh, like uh, the Tom Cruise thing. Yeah, in like uh, the bartender movie. I don't know that one, but yes. Uh, anyways, those got scrapped in two thousand three. Of course, salad stuck around. Just you don't shake them, or they go everywhere. I've All heard right. of salad. Yeah, we, we, can, we can go on and on, but we'll move on. Rebecca Copelman and El Win are coming up with news and weather next. Tennille Arts and Luke Holmes too. Thank you so much for checking us out from the Christie Door Company Studios in downtown Waterloo. I'm John A. Marks. I was trying to say it like a baseball announcer. Carrie Mack is here and JP you just walked in. JP, give me your best baseball announcer on your own name. Like, now batting, yeah? number four, James Patrick. I like it. You're I like it. So good at that. <laughs> well, it's like you do this sort of thing at Wartburg from time to time. I was going to say tonight, I I do have a Wartburg match, and it's strange. I'll be doing my first volleyball game of the season. Volleyball in February. That's How so strange weird. is that? It's like you and I playing football yeah. last Friday, uh, barely losing that game. By the way, at the Uni Dome, but still, they are they're going to turn around and have a fall schedule, which uh, looks like will be on on par for more normality this year than last year. So. 
Kind of crazy. All right. Uh, we don't have a ton of time. We're behind the gun a little bit. But JP usually does something called the history lesson when he's with us in the morning. Do you have one for us today, JP? Yes. And how ironic you started out this talk break by talking about baseball because it's a baseball history lesson. I love it. It was on this day, February 23rd of 1998, a country music superstar attended spring training with the San Diego Padres. Any idea who that could have been? I want to say Garth Brooks, but... How many years ago was this? 1998. Uh, he was 36 at the time. Uh, I'm putting my money on the yodeling boy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who was not born yet. Johnny Marks is correct. So was, yeah, Garth Brooks. He attended spring training with the Padres. He went one for 22 before he was being cut. So that's if, if you're not a baseball fan, that is not a good average. One for 22. That means no. one out of every 22 at bats, you got to hit. He came back with the Mets in the year 2000. I believe he was 0 for 17. And a few years after that, he tried out. This is just for fun. He wasn't, I don't think he had any aspirations of actually making a major league roster. He did have one hit with the Royals in 2004. Whoa, hey, way to go, Garth. Yeah, so his, he, he did, Michael Jordan did better when he tried his stint in baseball. But Garth yeah. Brooks, yeah, he was a great athlete in high school and college, though. I think Chris Gaines would have had more luck. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about his alter ego, Chris Gaines. Maybe, maybe he would have had more luck. That's cool. That's, uh, that's a fun one. So that was 23 years ago today. And I, I believe Garth, didn't he attend Oklahoma State? And he, play, he I think he threw the javelin. He had a scholarship or something there. You're right so. about, yeah. And I believe you're right about that. The javelin as well. I know he did. Uh, you look at him now. I mean, he's, he still looks like he's athletic, but he's a little bit older and a little bit more round as we all get. <laughs> mm-hmm. But there's no doubt about it. He was and still probably is an avid baseball fan, and uh, it didn't work out. It didn't work out for Tim Tebow either. All right, we'll be back in a couple of minutes on Marks in the Morning. I like Tim Tebow. I hope he does well. Well, God, I've got a couple of Nashville news stories here for you. A, very, a couple of very quick ones, including one that involves The Bachelor. Carrie Mack will enjoy that. Uh, and more to come. The song is co-written by Florida Georgia Lions, Tyler Hubbard and Brian Kelly. You know? <laughs> it almost sounded like, got a request from Mark. I hope you get lonely tonight. Like you're telling Mark to be lonely. I, you know, Mark may be requested that song for a specific reason. I didn't ask him, but <laughs> Sorry, it's Mark. possible. I'll apologize on Johnny's behalf. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, if there's something going on that you want to know. Or you want friends, you, you let us know. You know. We'll talk about it on the radio, if nothing else. <laughs> you try, I asked you if you could turn the heat down. I'm and sorry. My goodness, Carrie's hair is blowing in the wind back here. <laughs> you, thing kicked put in. Your, put your mic up to the vent. Do you think you can get it back oh there? Oh, my gosh. I think I you hear co- that? I'm a cover girl model. Jeez, good thing you have oh, a jacket on. Easy breezy, no, it beautiful. Fe- it feels good, but my goodness. Oh it my takes God. eight hours for it to heat up in here, but when you turn on the air conditioning, yeah. it's instant. Yeah, if you hear like a a fan sound, and there is you can really hear it on the radio. It's, there's one right above me, too. It sounds it's like the there's mid. a tornado outside. And- yeah, it does. Uh, we're actually on the next rover to Mars. <laughs> oh yes. Gosh. We are. Um, <laughs> oh my got, God. In about 10 minutes here, we've got Weird News Rodeo. JP talked. He, he was so excited about this yesterday, he started hyping it up. I had to do Weird News yesterday. I did the Florida story about the old women that really weren't old at all, but pretended to be old to get the COVID vaccine. I hope yours can top that. Today's story also will have some photos to go along with. Ah. We'll, we'll get it posted on the K92.3 app here once, right. once I get to the story. In advance, Howard Dean is excited. Ah. That's right. <laughs> We'll get to that coming up in the next 10 minutes on Marks in the Morning. Let me ask you two something. We are, all three of us, uh, own our own vehicles. My wife and I each have our own car. Obviously, James, you've got yours. And Carrie Mack, if you had to take three people, so a total of four, in your car right now, is it clean enough to do so? Oh, no. I have to go through there right now. I've got a lot of cups. Uh, I still haven't put the seat up from when I moved, mm. so it's all the way down. Could you hold one passenger? Oh uh, yeah, I could in the front. I would have to shove everything in the back, though. Okay, James, uh, JP, how about you? Well, I have three kids, so yeah. when I got this vehicle two years ago, my first thing was, guys, we're not going to eat in here, okay? And I should have known that was going to last that two go seconds. Well. Yeah. I'll, I'll be vacuuming up Fruit Loops and. Dried cheese and things I didn't even know they were eating back there. Wide boxes. Oh, wait, they're kids. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's me, actually. Oh, yeah, I'm the been in the car car. <laughs> So there's room, but it's a little messy. Oh, yeah, extremely messy. Especially in the winter, everything gets all there's salt and sand on the floorboards. It's, yeah. You want to hear something funny? JP will appreciate this. This is BK before Carrie. For Halloween this year, when I was uh, when we were doing Halloween at, at the radio station, I was Batman. You'll remember James. We have some photos of it. 
my Batman costume was in my back seat up until ye- <laughs> Sunday. Not yesterday, <laughs> Sunday. I finally took it out. So my whole back seat was taken up by a Batman costume. <laughs> and underneath it, this is even better, was a Tupperware. <laughs> it's got thrown right out. Didn't even make it back into the Was house. there something in the Tupperware? It was not. There was nothing in it, but it hadn't been washed, like a dishwasher washed. So I didn't even want to open the lid. It just went right into the trash. Oh, my gosh. I still have my cap and gown from college in the back uh, of my car. No. That tops it. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> well, here's why I ask. A new study finds 19% of people have not cleaned their car in three months. And 10% can't even remember the last time they cleaned it. I... I maybe do twice a year. I mean, I'll give it a good vacuum, and I wash it all the time, the exterior, but the well, interior, eh. We were talking about uh, two, three weeks ago about, you know, every time you go to the gas station, you should check your oil, and Carrie says she does that religiously, and that's important. Maybe there should be a routine associated with cleaning your car, like, you know, every season. That's still that's still three or four months, so maybe, I don't know, every weekend you make an effort to go out there and get the car vacuum. We have a nice car vacuum at home. Hannah's really good about using it. I'm not. I'll tell my kids, you guys vacuum out the car and clean it out. Any money you find in there, you can keep. And sometimes <laughs> I'll, I'll purposely put change on the floor and it's underneath the fun. mats. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so it's like it's a job for them. I mean, it might be 50 cents, but that's cheaper than having to go pay to do it. Yeah. And then they can, you know, use that money to impress their friends at school or whatever <laughs> kids do with quarters. And they don't do a great job cleaning, but at least I don't have to do it. Sure. That's brilliant incentivizing. Oh my gosh, you should just you should just drop fifties down there sometimes. Oh my god, they well, lose their little minds. <laughs> I would this, too. Dad? A fifty? Oh, uh, that's not worth anything. Give it to me. Just a piece of, <laughs> just a piece of paper with an old dead yeah, guy. They're obsolete. They don't work anymore. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, again, nineteen percent of us haven't cleaned our car, and here's one more for you. More than half of people in the study said they've spilled a drink on their car seats or on their car's floor. Only half. I would think that's 99%. Everyone spills something. My last vehicle, God bless it, my grandma passed away. I got her car. It was a fairly nice car. Not brand new, but fairly new. What was it? It was a 98 Ford Taurus. Oh. My grandma passed away in 06, so it wasn't new, new, but she didn't drive it a lot. Near the end of her life, she wasn't driving much. She had my grandpa for that, and she just didn't leave the home much. But... It wasn't like a souped-up car, but it was a nice level, mid-level, upper level. You know, each car has tiers where the seat the seats were leather. Or, I'm sorry, the seats were not leather. They were Ple- fabric. Are they pleather? Well, yeah. <laughs> one of my buddies, I love him to death, one of my good radio friends, had a uh, whippy dip. You remember the whippy yeah, dip. To those who don't know, whip, whippy dip's like a local Dairy Queen. It's way better than Dairy Queen. Sorry, Dairy Queen. It's up in Decorah. He had a uh, something from the Whippy Dip. He spilled it all over my car on my seat. <laughs> Didn't tell me about it. I found it like two days later. It was stained in. It looked like somebody pooped on the seat. How did you chocolate. not? Were, you were driving the car, and he was yeah. a passenger. Yeah, I let him out. And they didn't look. You know, I didn't look at the seat. I said, "All right, you know, work tomorrow." And he's like, "Okay." And he got out, and you know, about a day later, I figured out he spilled his Whippy Dip all over my car. <laughs> he he dipped all over your vehicle. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. I did the same thing. I confused the McDonald's McFlurry for a Dairy Queen blizzard. So I was I ordered the blizzard and, and I turned to my sister. I was like, look, look, look. And she's like, it's not a blizzard. And it just like came down like a blizzard. It came down like one, I bet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, did it stain your seats? Yeah, but I don't have that car anymore. It's my dad's now. Yeah. Oh. Here, here's an important it's question, probably. though. Did you scoop it up and eat it? <laughs> Not the very bottom, the very <laughs> top. I went for it. Hey, it's your car. You know the seat. If the seats are yeah, clean, nobody can judge you. You don't want to waste ice cream. Yeah, no. no, that's just bad. Well, I guess the moral of the story here is: if your car is super messy when life resumes "quote unquote" normality, nobody will ask you to drive everybody to lunch at work. Right? It won't be ever be your turn. Oh, I can't. Uh, there's a Batman costume in the back. <laughs> JP might have fifties in his car. We'll take yeah. JP. Will drive us to fifty lunch. cent pieces. Well, hey, dude, that's still double our paycheck. <laughs> weird news rodeo coming up on the ship. We have weird news rodeo. JP every day gives us a weird news story. Except uh, when you're unavailable, then I have to fill in. And I, I think you'd have been proud of the Florida story yesterday. But I'm, wear, I'm very excited because this story comes with a visual. And by the way, Weird News Rodeo, we have sound effects. Other radio stations, when they do this, don't. Okay, what you got for That's us, That's like a painful whip, too. I mean, there's I a good crack on that, baby. We need to... Did, were you... When was this? How long ago was this that I was talking about? Somebody messaged in and complained that it sounded like a towel snapping sound. Oh. <laughs> this must have been a while ago. Those hurt, too, though. 
Yes, they do. Don't get me wrong. But, no, it's supposed to be a whip, although you can use your imagination. <laughs> What you got for us today, All right. Earlier this month, police in Arizona found a 19-year-old guy on the ground near a water tower. His hands were tied behind his back with a belt, and a bandana was shoved in his mouth. So what would you think if you saw that? Um, I would think 911, uh, I've got an emergency for you. Yeah, you think like a kidnapping suspect. Yeah, you know, someone dumped this guy there. In dire straits. And that's what he told police, that two masked men had kidnapped him, hit his head, knocked him out. Oh. He also stayed the men, then drove him around and threw him out in the dust by this water tower in Arizona. So after detectives conducted an investigation, the evidence surrounding this guy's story wasn't quite matching up. He then admitted that he made up the entire thing. He put the gag in his mouth. He tied his own hands up with the belt. Why? Why would someone do that to themselves? Why? Let me, let me take a guess. Do you have information like his age? He is 19. School, test, something, finals. No, it's too early for finals. You're close. You're on the right track. He told okay. deputies that he just didn't want to go to work that day. <laughs> so he fabricated a story that not only was he kidnapped, but he tied his own hands and gagged himself. Oh, my goodness. Wow, I'm just shocked. It reminds me of uh, 50 First Dates with Adam Sandler. Yeah, and it does kind of, yeah. He was arrested on suspicion of false reporting to police. Wait and a minute, I, I just got a text message. Elwin said he's out by the uh, water tower. And <laughs> he's not going to make it in today. He won't have to worry about going back to work after he was arrested. He was also fired from his job at a place called the Tire Factory. Ooh. I well, guess he was just tired of working there. He was tired of the tires. Oh, nice job. Nice job. <laughs> what, did he, what did this kid think was going to happen? Uh, Even if he did get out of work, you can't call police. You can't tell your boss that I've been kidnapped. Like, what? This is a crime. Where are you? Yeah, you can't a, do there's, that. There's a lot wrong with this. I, I assume that he gets in big trouble now from the police. He, yeah. he lost his job, but I assume the cops are going to investigate, like... I don't know. Try to figure out how to charge him for their time. I've heard of things like that. His mug shot and the photo of him lying in the ground tied up. Um, it's, if it's not posted yet on the K92.3 app, it will be shortly. What a winner this guy is. Oh, my gosh. We should retire him, though. Yeah. Can you imagine if it's not a felony, but oh, just I think if it. it was, you know, when you apply for jobs, it'll ask if you've ever been convicted of a felony. And he had to explain that one as, his, his as he's shot, applying for a job. He looks uh, he, in his mugshot. He looks rather, you know, chipper. He's got a big smile. His hair is well done. That should have been your first clue. This guy doesn't look like he was kidnapped. It looks like he was taken to a, he like went to the beauty salon, had his hair done and all that, and then they just threw him out in the woods. And rather than just simply calling up your work and saying, I'm not feeling good today, guys. Maybe I have COVID. That would have, that would have been an excuse, but he made up this whole ordeal about lying in the dust under a water tower and he was kidnapped. Oh that's my. more work than going to work. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Take him out. You check him out. JP Story here does have the visual of him tied up. It looks like a uh, like a really B movie setup. Set <laughs> He's tied up. I see the bandana you're talking about. Then his mug shot. He looks like a million bucks. So go check it out. It's Marks in the morning. We'll be back in just a couple minutes with news and weather. Assuming Elwin gets uh, back from the water tower in Cedar Falls. <laughs> <laughs> Next, it's K ninety two three local COVID nineteen mighty K ninety two three the Cedar Valley's number one for new country. We're inching closer and closer to spring. Obviously on the calendar, it's still about a month away. But it certainly feels more like spring today. Of course, we've got uh, high pushing 40. Who knows? Maybe we'll get there. And then we've got uh, a lot of other spring-like things. Like, for example, Four Queens is reopened. As JP pointed out, this is very recent. It was, what, last week, two weeks ago? Yeah, a couple weeks back. So we've got that. And then uh, everybody's talking about Major League Baseball. The pitchers and catchers, I think, have reported. Uh, spring training starts very soon. I'm sure the Waterloo Bucks will announce their season very, very soon. There's just a lot to look forward to. That's summertime. I get that. But lots to look forward to. And uh, one of the big things that we're excited about is concerts. Concerts, concerts, concerts. We announced Justin Moore will be at the Buchanan County Fair in Independence on July 8th. That's a Thursday. We will have tickets to give away. Um, oh, I almost said that another act, but I don't know that it's been announced. But Justin Moore for sure. Uh, we'll have tickets to give away. Justin Moore will be there on the uh, 8th. And then we have Lee Bryce coming much sooner than that to Cedar. Uh, sorry, that one's in Dubuque at the Five Flag Center in Dubuque on the 13th. <clears throat> Lee Bryce is going to be on the show Thursday. Yeah. Wow. He's going to call in. He's not going to come in. I, I asked and I begged and I pleaded and they said social distancing. And I said, <laughs> we've got a separate studio for him. We don't. 
But anyway, he's so gonna call us. he's going to be taking my place on the show. No, I no, see no. where your favoritism no, goes. No, he's actually going to take my place. It'll be you and Carrie. Oh. <laughs> It'll be Bryce in the morning with Carrie Mack and James Patrick, and I'll be uh, over here doing my wax on, wax off from uh, Karate Kid cleaning our window. After the interview, is that when you're going to announce that you are actually the opener with your <laughs> harmonica skills? That country night? superstar Lee Bryce will be appearing with opening act. Everybody calls him Mark. <laughs> you can just do four minutes of stand-up comedy. We'll see how that goes. I don't think I can make it a minute, let alone to be dad jokes. Be like, oh, I just flew in from Waterloo, and boy, are my arms tired. Uh, yeah. Crickets. <laughs> but we'll have Lee Bryce on the show Thursday. And you know what Thursdays are all about? Every Thursday before the show, we give away tickets to Lee's show. So, um... You'll hear him, and then you'll have a chance to go see him live in Dubuque. And then there's Eli Young Band, EYB, going to be in Cedar Rapids. That's the one in Cedar Rapids at the end of March. Also coming up very fast, that one's at the new uh, Alliant Energy Powerhouse. It's the same uh, venue that used to be called the U.S. Cellular Center, but they've renamed themselves Alliant Energy Powerhouse. March 24th, everybody likes the term. Quad Pod will have a quad pod of tickets because of uh, social distancing. So you and three others will be able to go in. Top for that, all you've got to do is go on the K92.3 app, if you haven't done this already, and enter to win. When we get a little bit closer to the show in uh, mid-March, we'll announce our winner. So you still have time to go get entered. But that's exciting. I, I think that those are kind of a first of many. I think we'll have a lot more shows to talk about as we get closer and closer and closer to the end of this pandemic and obviously summertime. I really hope uh, we have Friday Lose this year to get excited about. JP remembers those, Carrie. It'd be fun to have, uh, you know, K Night out there, K92 Night. Uh, your station, JP's Classic Rock station was out there. It'll be it'll be a fun spring, I think. I, I mean, I'm sure. But as the weather starts to change, I'm getting really excited about all these things that last year I feel we got kind of robbed of. Have you noticed that, both of you, how everyone's moods have altered so much the last couple of days just with the melting of the snow, the sunshine, we're out of 50 below zero. Everyone's just right. in a, such a better mood. It's true. It is true. The other day, Carrie Mack came at me with an ice pick. Today, she came at me with a snow cone. A very <laughs> different kind of ice. So, Don't spill it in your car, though. We <laughs> learned that. No, and I'm very boring. I wanted a snow cone that was ice flavored, so it was literally oh, no, mm, no flavor. Very bland. Mm, tastes <laughs> like the refrigerator, like some peas and carrots. I'm the worst. If Carrie Mack called me and said, hey, I'm at, uh, what is uh, JP, help me out here. What's this snow cone place right across from us here? Drawn a blank. Snow cone place. Ah, is yeah. it here's what's popping? Do they have snow cones? No, it's not here's what's popping. There is one. Or, ooh, I hope they're still there. There's one right across from the Blacks building. Oh, I know what you're talking Right in the corner there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, God, it's the shaved ice type. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like Italian ice? It's, uh, yeah. oh, my gosh. If anybody knows. I always take my know. kids there, too. Well, anyways, Carrie would call and say, I'm over there. Would you like me to get something? And I'd say, yeah. Do they have sugar-free? I'd be the one making her stand there forever. No, they don't have sugar-free. Oh, my gosh. All right, I'll just have the ice-flavored one. You just want me to bring you shaved ice. Tropical snow. Tropical snow. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, I love that. I'm excited. We'll go there, too, when it gets warmer. So there you go. Lots to look forward to. All right, we'll be back with your last Nashville News Minute of the Morning on Marks in the Morning. As always, the K92.3 app, which maybe you're on your way to right now to enter to win those Eli Youngman tickets. We've got news there, too.